Oh 
think about that. You've been so good.
trying to get others to know that it's okay to worship him is that once we get into the church and we sit down and we get real comfortable amen, amen. River Jackson the last thing we want to do is get up yeah. if we don't have to amen <laughs> amen and to get folks to raise their hands in front of other folks that's a challenge that's a challenge but I just want you to know that when you give holy praise God will inhabit that praise and some of those things you've been laboring about and struggling with and praying for God will come through and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. This is the Cedar Grove Baptist Church for all of you that are out in virtual land. We are located at 2624 Saluda Road in Chester, South Carolina. We are a humble church right down the road, a piece off of 77. And if you would come, I guarantee that you will feel the spirit of the Lord in this place. We don't profess to be everything and all things, but one thing we are, we're just a community church, building God's kingdom one soul at a time. And you are welcome, welcome, welcome in this place. Again, we're located at 2624 Saluda Road in Chester, South Carolina. God bless you, God keep you. All right, let us pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to dwell in this place. Bless us and keep us and those of you, remember I said that y'all don't like to stand, we don't like to stand. If you can, if you will, let us invoke the Holy Spirit to continue blessing in this place. So gracious and mighty God, we come. Thanking you for another monumental opportunity in which we have come and gathered together to worship you through song, through praise, through preaching. We pray, oh God, that we will be successful in pleasing you and you alone. For we know that this is not about us, but it is definitely about you. So we thank you for us and anointing us to do your will right here on this place we call her. We thank you for everybody, every soul that's under the sound of my voice, whether they be virtually or in the flesh. We pray that you would bless them and those who they love. Keep them. Help them hold them. Father God, we pray that you will look on our many transgressions and forgive us of every sin. The sins we clearly remember and the ones that we have forgotten. We pray that you would create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. And Lord God, if we will be drawn nearer unto thee and restore unto us the joy of thy salvation. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. And we pray that you through him will rule the super rule in our hearts and our minds today. That we will be receptive of not only your word, but of your praise. Thank you, O oh God, for this group and amalgamation of people that we have here today. That we will, Heavenly Father, remove every stronghold and give you valuable praise. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you are about to do. Thank you, Father God, for being present in our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all. Why y'all want y'all should have said that? You know? Amen. I've only been gone one Sunday and they are ready.
as they prepare to come, we are going to pray one more time. Ask God to bless our offering that we also shall receive. So, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless the offering that we will receive. Allow it to be used to edify thy kingdom. O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for those who will give. Those who have a sincere desire to give, but don't have it. And for those who still possess plenty, but refuse to give any. In Jesus' name, bless us all, O God. Amen. The place will be here in Cedar Grove Sanctuary. The date and time is going to be March 21st at 7 p.m. So please, all you, please come to rehearsal. There is a Noah's Ark payment for everyone that is going on the trip that will be due on March 15th. There will be a quarterly church meet immediately following service on March 10th, 2024. We want to say happy birthday to Miss Viora Gordon. She is celebrating her 89th birthday. Yeah. Thank you. What you kept us in your thoughts and prayers, did the lovely arrangement, gave a memorial donation, or helped out in any way. Your love and kindness brought us great comfort and will always be remembered. Thank you, the Heath family. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good manager, press down and shake it together, run it over. Cedar Grove, my family and I want to thank you from the depths of our hearts for the outpouring of love and support you showed my family. Continue to pray for us on this new journey in our lives. Just thank you for being there. We love each and every one of you. Pray the Lord's blessings, giving you... Pray, pray the Lord blesses your giving heart in abundant measure. Thank you, the standards are strong family. A special thank you. It's easy to be grateful when there are wonderful people like you in the world. The Pastor A, Usher Board, Culinary, Reverend Teresa Jones, Libby Cathcart, Charles Jones, and the entire church family. Who is this from? Oh, that's, that's from Miss Adams. Stand up, Miss Adams, so y'all know who's from. <laughs> and we have one more announcement from Sister Sanders. Okay. Good morning, Cedar Grove. As uh, the month of March, we're going to be celebrating uh, women's. This is Women's uh, History Month. So we're going to take time out. By, uh, Five Sundays to celebrate some women who are doing uh, things in Cedar Road that some of you may not know. Okay, can I call my sister, uh, Bernie Pope, will you come down, please? Okay. <laughs> Y'all, this sister here, she really working. You don't have to be working, you can be working behind the scenes. You don't have to be working for anybody to see you. She's working. I thank God for her. I know you had no bad knees. You're still working. So, Mr. Carlos, we want to thank you for what you have done, what you're doing, and what you're going to continue to do here at City Road. Um, you, you drive the bus so faithfully when we need you to drive, and you drive so well. And you sing on the choir, and you give God all those praises. So the women of City Road, the women's ministry, and Lord Pastor Harris and the church man, we want to give you a little token of our love. And I appreciate you. you. All right.
degree. Amen. Do you all know that we recorded one of the hymn choirs numbers probably five years ago, possibly, and people are still commenting on my YouTube channel about the hymn choir. Amen. Saying things like I miss that type of singing. Amen. And that reminds me of home. Amen. And I wish churches still did that. But that hymn, Amen Selection, has over 40,000 views and still climbing. And there was a song, I cannot remember if it was Sister T.T. that sang that, or if it was Sister Anika. But the song that they sang is still getting great reviews, and I know that had to be a good four or five years ago. So I'm saying this. The ministry of God is still alive and well. And when you put your heart into the arms of Jesus Christ and you allow your ministry to actually minister, amen, then God will take that small seed and he will provide an increase so large that you cannot really explain it. So if you think about it, you have over 40,000 people who have been blessed and over 36,000 people who have been blessed by your ministry. Amen. I don't take that lightly because a minister and his or her ministry can save a nation through the, through the power of God and can destroy one. Amen. So it is extremely important that when we give, we give the best of our service. And I know it's not about Deacon Peterson, it's not about Deacon Brown. It's not about Ronika, it's not about Sister T.T., it's not about any of them, nor is it about me. But it is about the goodness, the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When we remember that, we can sing when folks don't sing with us. Amen. We can praise Him when folks look at us like we are crazy. And we can preach when our soul will say amen. Because I learned a long, long, long time ago that when we praise God, He is there. And one thing about it, through what we've been through, ups and downs and what have you, it should behoove all of us to want God on our side every single second. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, Amen y'all. Those of you that have your words say, I brought mine. Amen. Those of you that didn't say, shame on me. Amen. If you brought your word, turn very briefly to the book of St. Luke, chapter 7, starting at verse number 24. The book of St. Luke, chapter 7, starting at verse number 24. And I am going to attempt one more time, y'all, to give you the Reader's Digest version. In other words, I'm going to try to truncate this and slim it down. But we'll see what the Holy Spirit says. Amen. When you have it, say, I got it. You still look at it just one minute. The book of St. Luke, chapter 7. Starting at verse number 24. And it says this. It says, And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What were ye out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what were ye out for to see? 
a man clothes is so fragrant? Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are in the king's courts. But what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. I'll say that again, for I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God, being baptized with the baptism of John. The Jews will hear we thought this beautiful sunny, cloudy, foggy morning when God has your back. Amen. When God has your back. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for being with us. Through as we say thick and thin. We thank you, Lord, that when we slept last night, you were with us. When we rose this morning, you were with us. As we drove from there to here, you were with us. As we took our places in the sanctuary, you were here. As we sang, as we praised thee, you were here. And as I stand before you now, we recognize that you are still here. We thank you, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that there is no path too hard for you to fight. And we know that if we would just be still and just lean on your everlasting arms, then all things will be all right. For there is no weapon that's formed against us that shall prosper. Not physically, not orally. We know, Father God, that you are a God that can do all things, but let us down. So we thank you already for what you're about to do. So I pray, oh God, that you will open our minds to be receptive of your words today. And that you will please, Lord, I preach to me today as I preach to your people. Teach me as to your word that you will pass off. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Here we are again, preaching from God's holy catalog through what we call the gospel. Amen. Amen. Of Luke. Luke presents Jesus Christ. Amen. As a king. To all the people. The Jews and the Gentiles. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He explains and expresses his royalty yes. and how he is the one who they have been waiting for yes. for a very long time. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. He encourages and ensures them that what they've been waiting for is right before them. Yes. Are y'all walking with me? We find where he mentions in this span of scripture one by the name of John. We know him as John the Baptist. But during this time, God is finally starting to transition from his period of popularity to his period of opposition. Amen. They're trying to make a case on how to get him out of the way. Uh -huh. Are y'all walking with me? Uh -huh. And how many of you know that Satan is tenacious? Yeah. Uh -huh. He will do all he can and take as much time that is absolutely necessary yeah. to accomplish his goal. So I learned a long time ago that when we are expecting him to leave us alone, he is now starting to wrap it up. 
Amen. Amen. He will not stop. It's not in his DNA to give up Amen. on bringing us down. Amen. He will pull out all stops. Go 105% of the way to make sure you collapse and fall. Amen. Now, John the Baptist himself is feeling the heat. Because as we preach this scripture, and in this biblical time, he is incarcerated Amen. for preaching Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Amen. He is in jail, as a matter of fact. He is there to stay. Amen. But his boys, his disciples, if you will, those whom he, amen, baptized, are watching this man by the name of Jesus Christ yeah. heal folks who are sick, yes. Yes. give it sight to them who are blind. Right. Are y'all there? Right. Not only that, but he had the nerve to raise folks from the dead. Yeah. Feed people with a little bit, making much. Yeah. Walking on water, still in the storm. Yeah. Are y'all walking with me? Yeah. Casting out demons, forgiving folks' sins, healing flows of blood, yeah. curing weak ankle bones. Yeah. John's disciples are watching here and seeing and experiencing all of this. Yeah. So they let John the Baptist knows that, man, do you know what's going on out here? Amen. This man is doing all kinds of things and miracles and wonders and preaching words that no man has ever heard, not even the learned scribes, cannot speak so eloquently. Amen. John the Baptist began to think in his mind, how many of you know that if you think long enough, you can find something wrong? Amen. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things can be absolutely great, but you mess around and ponder too long. You will find something messed up in the blessing that God has given you. Amen. How many of you found that perfect man? He's good at everything. Everything he's good at. You love him to life. Are y'all there? And I'm going to dig down into my Ebonics suitcase and say, man, one of y'all better mess with him. Are y'all there? You're a good thing. But eventually, you began to stay in this situation for a while, and even that good thing has some wrong with it. Are y'all there? Look at it. Hey, what you in my clothes? Found your basket right there in his underwear over here. <laughs> if you're in a situation long enough, you began to see wrong things in a lesson. But some might say, if John is in jail, how in the world is he blessed? Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. That's when God does his best work. John heard about all this. His friends and his, those whom he uh, baptized are coming. And he's doing everything. So John is now starting to think, hold tight. If he can do that, surely, amen, he can get me out of jail. How many of you ever been in jail in your mind, in your heart, in your body, in your soul, and you just need someone to come by with a key yeah. and let you out? Yeah. Somebody who has power, somebody who has authority, if they would just take a little time yeah. to come by and see about me. Yeah. But this is where John was. He, he needed God to come by in the form of Jesus just to see about him because he knows that he is able. Yeah. I want y'all to walk with me on this now. Yeah. It's something when you are incarcerated in your mind 
But you know that there is someone who's able to get you out. But Christ never shows up. So he sends a message. Are you the one? Are you really the one? Or should we wait for somebody else? Because I hear what you're doing out there, but you're not coming by and seeing about me. I believe John, I don't know, I went there with him, but I believe he began to get a little sad, a little indignant within himself. Amen. Look what I did. Uh, <laughs> out in the wilderness. Yeah. Where camel yeah. 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 Eating grasshoppers and sipping on honey. Yeah. Preaching about the one who was on his way. Yeah. One who will capitalize on all things we desire. One who is able to make the crooked road straight. What yeah. is able to save you from this oppression? I've been preaching repentance all this time. I've been in your corner. I've been on your side. Now I'm in jail because of what I preached about you. Yeah. But you feed other folks. I don't know what never. This is just me thinking this might have happened. I would never, but nevertheless, I know that you are able to set me free. Notice that. And all of this, Christ did not give him still what he wanted. And I began to think about this thing. Remember I told you that I think analytically about a lot of stuff and I began to do some reasoning as to why Christ would not free him. As a matter of fact, he never gave him an answer. He never went to visit. He never went to see about it. How many of you felt that way before? Yeah. You know you have been in a hot place. You know you have been in a desolate place in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit. And things seem to be going from bad to worse. And you know that God is able, but you don't feel that he has come back to see about you. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. Even though the light is not on in your room, God still has the light in the house. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sometimes we have to get up and move to the light. Yeah. Get out of the darkness, which we feel sorry for ourselves. Yeah. Our own pity and find the light. Yeah. Sometimes the light won't come to us. We have to get up and find the light. Yeah. And if we constantly whine and complain and find in the midst of a blessing, we will remain in darkness. But God said, if you just believe, I will show you the light. Now let us preach real quick. The Bible said, now the messengers are hearing the words of Christ. And they have just seen where Christ raised a widow's son. Touching the beer or the buyer, the coffin, yeah. and saying, you know, arise. Yeah. And how everybody in the area began to rejoice. Uh, but now his disciples, John the Baptist, disciples, they called him that simply because they were baptized under him, yeah. hurried out and ran yeah. to see John. Yeah. Yeah. After a conversation, with Christ. The Lord says, go your way. I want you to tell John what you've seen. Tell John what you've heard. How blind folks see. How dumb folk talk. How lame folk walk. How lepers are cleansed. How do their folks hear? Oh, and how they had our raised? Oh, but not only that, I want you to remind him that the poor is still received in the word. Yeah. But I want to remind you to tell him yeah. that he is blessed. Yeah. Did y'all get that in your spirit? Those who are not offended in 
me. Yes. I don't know, and I was not there, but I believe yes. that when John received the word of the Lord, yes. he felt bad yes. for thinking his thoughts. Yes. Because John right there realized that it was not about John, yes. but it was about Messengers of John began to speak to the people concerning John. He said, What went he out into the wilderness for? He said, To see a reed shaking with the wind. I said, I'm about to let you know that with the Lord is on your side. Clean up 
troubles for what? I don't know about you, but I have battle scars. I have fighting scars from walking and talking with the Lord. I want you to know. Oh, I need you to know that God says, what did you do? Go out to see a prophet. Now you got it right to Prophets don't worry about themselves. Prophets don't lift themselves up. Prophets realize it's not about me, but it's carrying God's word. He might not be pretty, he might not be fancy, he might not be cozy, but he did what I needed him to do. And I told y'all this before. Like an old beat up truck. Are y'all walking with me? I told y'all this before. I feel like an old beat up truck. Years ago, I used to have an old Ford truck. Five speed. When you went down the road, you hear the clackety, 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 clackety. Tires was misaligned. For you, when you sing 
God's praises. He's lifting you up when you pray to the Lord. He's lifting you up every hymn that you hum. He's lifting you up every day. You smile and greet God's children. You lift him up every second. You show the world God's program. You lift him up. Stop me if you will. But God, who reach down, pick us up from our worst mistake and bless us. The word that he sees fit. John, I said, John. Was sent a long time ago. And the Lord had to remind him it might not be pretty, but it's necessary. You might not get what you want, but what you get is necessary. Are y'all walking with me? Everybody won't say amen, but the few that will is necessary. Some folk don't know how to praise them up, but the ones who do is necessary. When you go through the struggle, it might not be what you want, but it's necessary. And if your blessing is a blessing for somebody else, then it's necessary. Are y'all walking with me? I'm glad today that the Lord is on my side and if God is with me if God is with me who is anybody that would be against me he says what I said to you among those that are born of women there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist Ezekiel was a greater. Elijah was a greater. Elisha was a greater. Abraham was a greater. Nahum was a greater. Are y'all walking with me? Jeremiah was a greater. This man foretold the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Are y'all there? And we are thankful that no matter what other folks say, the Lord has our back. And I'm glad. I'm glad, I'm glad. I'm glad. Maybe there's somebody here. Maybe there's somebody here, man. That don't know the Lord for yourselves. Or maybe you do. We here at the Cedar Grove Baptist Church will welcome you into this place in one of three ways. Christian experience, baptism, amen, or letter. We you come? And those of the church are open right now to receive you. Now y'all, there's a song that I used to sing a long time ago. And I said I was gonna sing a song and then the Lord released that game left it open just a little bit for me to have an allergy attack yesterday and today, but I'm gonna sing it anyway. I'm gonna let you know right now, it won't sound good, but I'm gonna sing it. And someone says, I feel all right. I feel all right. I feel all right in my soul. I feel all right. I feel all right. I feel all right in my soul. Prayer wheel keeps on turning. Y'all know the song? All right, it says, I feel alright. I feel alright. I feel alright in my soul. Yeah. I feel alright. Yes, yes, who it is. I feel alright. I feel alright in my soul. That's it, come on, y'all. I feel alright. I feel alright. I feel alright. I feel alright in my soul. Yeah. I feel alright. I feel alright. I feel alright in my soul. 